Well, it is so good to be with you this morning. I'm expectant. I'm excited. We're in our Dreaming Again series, and this series has really impacted Deborah and, and my life. Honestly, uh, over the last number of weeks, God has placed dreams in our lives and in our hearts, and we're believing that for you. Right at the start of this series, Pastor Lucinda, our lead pastor, opened us up with Ezekiel, and uh, Debs and I actually cleared a day to fast and to pray and to ask God to continue working his dreams, his vision into our lives. I believe that God is going to continue to place dreams in our lives and in our hearts. A few months ago, Deborah and I had our first baby. Her name is Zaya Erin Malone, and she is so cute. She is also very chunky. She has rolls on rolls, literally. Her fat rolls have fat rolls. She is the cutest thing that has ever been. Now, we're new parents, and uh, we were very, very nervous, but honestly, so excited. We actually took her to the doctor once, and uh, we said, hey, she's sleeping really, really well. Uh, she doesn't even get up for a feed, and the doctor looked at her, looked at me and Debs, and says, there's gonna be no harm to that baby if she misses a feed. She has got fat rolls on fat rolls. She is so cute. But here's the thing, at the start of Zaya's life, she would go to sleep and in the middle of the night, we would hear her cooing and making noises and moving, but she'd still be fast asleep. We'd run in, look into the cot and, and she'd be asleep, but she was cooing and, and talking nearly. And we went to the doctor, we said, hey, this is what's happening. She said, she's probably just dreaming. I looked at Debs, I was like, she's not even walking. She's not even talking, but she is dreaming. Now listen to this scripture. The psalmist writes in Psalm 139, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before any of them came to be. Listen, friend, before you were even born, God had dreams, desires, and plans for your life. He had plans for you. He had purposes for you. Before you could even walk, before you could even talk, he placed dreams in your life for you to fulfill. Every dream and every desire is accompanied by something. It's called time. And in that time, you and I must wait. We must wait. Habakkuk 3.20, God says to Habakkuk, hey, for the vision or the dream is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry or though it delay, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. We're in our Dreaming Again series, and I believe God has put dreams in your life. He has put dreams in your heart. Over the last number of weeks, we have heard, dream again, dream again. Now, you've got to wait. You've got to wait. So often, we love drive through dreams, where we could just rock up and get our dream, and maybe we'd like to treat it like, you know, click and collect in the supermarket, where we just go and have a dream and we get it. But no, God works dreams through time. And what accompanies every single dream is a waiting period. I want to speak to you today on waiting on God, waiting on God's dreams, waiting on his desires, waiting on his plans to come to fruition. I'm speaking to parents who are waiting for their children to come back to the Lord. I'm speaking to women who are waiting to have a family. I'm speaking to men who are waiting to, to change maybe a generational curse and bring, bring generational wealth and, 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 and blessing and prosperity into their family. I'm speaking to students who are waiting for uh, funding for their exam. I'm speaking to citizens who are believing for hope in a nation. I'm speaking to professionals who want to influence their sphere. I'm speaking to business owners who maybe have been affected by COVID, but still believe that God can do incredible things. I'm speaking to single people who are believing 
for a relationship. And I'm speaking to those who have a dream that has not yet come to fruition. If you get one thing today and you get nothing else, I would love you to take this with you. If you can wait for it, you will walk into it. If you can wait for it, if you can wait for the dream, you will walk into it. Isaiah 40, verse 31, the Israelites are in oppression. God says this, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. If you can wait for it, you will walk in it. As I read this scripture, I wanted to extend this, this thought or this message to one more group of people. My wife and I, a couple of weeks ago, were in Kesaren. And we as a church are believing and praying and standing with everybody in that community. Our hearts uh, are believing that God is going to restore and renew. But Debs and I were on holidays just before the riots took place. And for the first time in our lives, we saw a crowned eagle. It was incredible. I remember we walked up to this viewing deck and out of nowhere, this massive bird, only a couple of feet away, extended its wings. It was huge. I was filled with awe. I was also a little afraid. I grabbed Zaya tightly. I literally looked at it. It flew so confidently over the mountain, over the forest, and it perched itself in the highest tree on the top of the highest mountain. I knew that we were going to be speaking today on dreaming again and I felt the Holy Spirit say there are people who used to soar like eagles, but something happened in their lives. Daniel, speak to people whose wings have been clipped, who had the ability to dream and to soar and to fly and to move forward, but something happened that grounded their flight. Life Maybe it was a disappointment. Maybe it was an anxiety. Maybe it was a fear. Maybe it was a traumatic event. Maybe it was the color of your skin. Maybe it was uh, something that happened in your life that hindered your ability to soar and to fly. The Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord will soar on wings like eagles. But maybe something clipped your wings. But those who wait, upon the Lord, will renew their strength. Come on, I want to tell you today that you can fly again, that you can soar again, that you can dream again. There may have been a dream that was broken. There may be a dream that was shattered. There may be a dream that was discouraged. But right now in Jesus' name, we're believing that throughout these series, throughout this time, this period in our church, God is going to resurrect and reignite broken dreams. And you will fly again. Because if you can wait for it, you will walk in it. I want to give you a few practical things today. I really want to help you because in order for us to wait on God's dream, we need to understand two things. We need to understand God's timing and our waiting. You can't wait on God if you don't understand our waiting and God's timing some practical things to help you. I want to encourage you. I want to equip you because we have dreams in our hearts that we need to walk this journey of life and still believe that God in our waiting period is going to work. Number one is very simply this. God's timing is not our timing. God's timing is not your timing. God's timing is very different to our timing. He wears a different watch. When Deborah and I first came to South Africa, I remember we were with a group of friends and we tried to arrange a catch-up or a coffee. I said, hey, it'd be great to get a coffee. They were like, yeah, yeah. I was like, let's arrange a time. They were like, I'll let you know when works for us now, now. I said, now, now. They were like, yeah, I'll let you know now, now. I was like, what does now, now mean? They were like, oh, it means I'll let you know now, now. I was like, I, I don't understand. Maybe, maybe you could give me a date or a time or... Maybe you could just let me know like an exact place. They were like, okay, I'll let you know an exact place and an exact time just now. 
I was like, just now? They were like, yeah, just now. I was like, what's just now? They were like, it's shorter than now now. I was like, what, 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 what's just now? How, how long? Is it 10 minutes? Is it 10 hours? Is it 10 weeks? They were like, well, that depends on who you're asking. I was like, okay, well, I need to figure this out. I was like, I don't, I don't really understand. Now, now, just now. He's like, look, just don't get me started on right now because that's a whole other ball game. It could be right now or it could be in the next few weeks. I was like, this is crazy. He had a different interpretation to time than I did. Now I've understood that now now means somewhere off there in the distant future. It could be now, it could be in five minutes, it could be in five months. Here's the thing. God has a different perspective of time to you and I. He has a different perception of it. Bible puts it like this in Habakkuk 3.20, our key text for today. God says to Habakkuk, though the dream tarries or delays, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. In one sentence, it appears that there is a contradiction in the Bible. I think that's sometimes the way our Christian life is. Though it tarry, wait for it, it will not tarry. Sometimes our Christian life, it's like God is saying one thing, but something else is happening. Here is the thing that we need to understand. God is saying to Habakkuk, hey, it may feel like to you there's a delay. Wait for it. But for me, it's not going to delay. Here is the thing. A delay for you is not a delay for God. What may be delayed in your life or you are waiting on, God does not see it as a delay. He sees it as his perfect timing. We call it God's perfect timing, that everything happens in his time, on his time, for a specific purpose. God's time is different to your time. Well, Daniel, that's crazy. Does he think in months? Does he think in years? No, let, let, me, let me put it like this. While you're waiting for your dream, you need to understand this. Point number two, that waiting on God is not the same as waiting on God man. Waiting on God is not the same as waiting on man. A few months ago, Deborah and I queued for a visa, and uh, we were queuing a long time. I think we were queuing a couple of hours, and we got to the top of the queue. The queue was actually outside. Uh, it felt a little bit longer because of social distancing, and we got to the top of the queue after a number of hours, and as I got to the top of the queue, I realized <laughs> that my cue was to get into another cue. Has that ever happened to you? You queued to get into a cue. I was so discouraged. I was so disheartened. I was like, Debs, we just queued to get into a queue. We waited another number of hours. We got to the top of the queue eventually, and I realized something. I realized that the people who we were queuing on, who were serving us, had so many people that they had to serve and that they weren't really ready for the amount of things and people that were going to come their way. But waiting on God is different to waiting on man. Well, Daniel, how do you mean? When you wait on man, you're waiting for them to be ready. But when you wait on God, he's waiting on you to be ready. I'm going to say that one more time. When you wait on man, you're waiting for them to be ready to have the capacity to get things done. But when you wait on God, he is waiting for you to be ready. He tells Habakkuk, the dream awaits an appointed time. But those who wait upon the Lord renew their strength. Isaiah, they shall soar on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Let me put it to you like this. While you're waiting... God is renewing. I think about it over the course of my life. Gosh, I wouldn't be able to handle some of the dreams that I've had if I had those dreams right there and then. God is waiting for you to be ready. I used to pray and over my Christian life, I used to pray, God, give me. Lord, won't you? Come on, do it, Lord. But now my prayer has changed. As I've walked with the Lord a number of years, I've started to realize my prayer isn't God give me or God how long or God when will it happen? My prayer is God grow me. 
grow me so I can be ready for the dream that you have placed in my life. When I was a child, my dad said he was gonna buy me a bike. I remember going to the shop and there was one bike that I wanted. The only problem with that bike was that it was a little bit too big for me. I remember saying, dad, it's the only bike that I want. It's the only one. Dad was like, it's not going to fit you. The frame is too big. The wheels are too big. Dad, it's the bike. It's red. It's beautiful. My dad, on Christmas, knowing the bike was a little too big, got me the bike. I'll never forget on Christmas Day, cycling out of the house in a bike that was too big for me. I could not even stretch my hands to the handlebars. I couldn't handle it. It was too big. After two minutes, I had cycled into the back of my neighbor's car. Isn't it amazing? God knows the perfect time to bring something, someone, some place into your life. He is waiting for you to be ready. We don't wake up to dreams fulfilled. We grow into dreams. We grow into them taking place in our lives. And while you're waiting, God is making I've often thought, hey, I can be complaining, but while I'm complaining about God, how long? When's it going to happen? God is orchestrating. He's making things happen. But here is the thing. He wants you to be ready for what he has placed in your life. I suppose now we understand that God's timing is not our timing. And waiting on God is different to waiting on man. Okay, I understand what God is doing, Daniel, but, but what am I doing? What am I doing in my waiting? What, what do I do? Well, I want to give you a practical point. Point number three is very simply this. Let your weight build your faith. David was a man after God's own heart. And he wrote this in Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently and expectantly before the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. I waited patiently and expectantly. Hey, faith looks like expectation. Let me give you an example. Debs and I waited a number of years to have a baby, waited a number of years. But when Deborah became pregnant, the weight shifted from waiting to expectation. Suddenly, things in our lives started to change. We started to get things ready. We started to actively expect that something was on the way. We started preparing. We got the room. We bought the car. We were actively preparing, expecting that this was going to come. I remember the Holy Spirit speaking to me so clearly after our first ultrasound. He said this to me, Daniel, if only you would wait for your spiritual dreams that I've placed in your life with the same expectation. I remember being so challenged because this baby that I could now see through an ultrasound was being birthed. And I believe today God is birthing dreams. The problem is, is it's hard to get a spiritual ultrasound. That's faith. So often we wish we could see the birthing taking place, but, but no, all we have to look to is faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 gives a great definition. Let the weight build your faith. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance in what we do not see. Sometimes there are no spiritual ultrasounds, but we have to expect that God is going to move. There is an assurance in you and in me that what God has said, he will do. I am expecting God to open doors in my life. I am expecting him to bring what he has for me into my life. I am expecting for life change. I'm expecting for whatever dream, there is an expectation. It's not waiting and just hoping something comes along. No, it's saying, God, I'm ready, I'm expectant, and I am waiting for you to move. There are dreams that God is birthing and forming in you right in this sermon series, right over these past few weeks that you cannot see physically, but they are there spiritually. Wait with expectation. Get ready for what God is going to do in your life. Continue believing and stirring your faith. Let your weight build your faith. Next point is this, while you're waiting, wait serving, not sitting. Wait serving, not sitting. Dreams don't come to you while you're sitting. 
They come when you are serving. Luke 16, 10, Jesus says this. He says, if you're faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the large ones. Let me, let me change it a little bit and add some creative license to the text. If you're faithful in the little dreams, God will be faithful in the big ones. I'm telling you this today, like a waiter serves a table, you can serve God. Like a waiter waits on a table, you can wait on God. It's not passive, it's active. It's saying, God, what do you want me to do today? In the little things, what do you want me to do? Lord, in the little dreams, in the little things, in my family, in my workplace, in my college studies, in whatever it is, Lord, in the little things, I am going to be faithful because the waiting is in the making. Or the making is in the waiting. If you are faithful in the little things, little, 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 much, Faithful, 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 faithful. And then one day, fruitful. God starts to open up doors. Hey, God does not work like the corporate world where we have to climb a dream ladder. No, God works in the little, little, little much. Faithful, 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 fruitful. I want to tell somebody today, you've been faithful in the little I believe dreams are coming to fruition in your life. I believe God provision is coming into your life. I believe as you continue to be faithful, God promises that you will be fruitful, that those who do much with little will receive much. I'm believing that for your family. I'm believing that for your life. And I'm believing that for your future. Back to Isaiah, Isaiah 40, verse 31. They shall run and not, be weary, they shall walk and not be faint. The truth is that I become weary in my waiting. I sometimes say, Lord, how long? How long is it going to take? This dream that you've placed in our lives and our hearts, how long? We can become weary in our waiting. Lord, I don't have enough spiritual stamina to get through. I've done all the things you've asked me to do. I want to finish with this point. Very simply this, no matter how long you wait, God's dream is never too late. No matter how long you wait, God's dream is never too late. I don't know if you saw the news recently, but the richest man in the world flew to space. It was fascinating. I actually watched it live as it was happening, and uh, it was incredible. The crew went up, and then they came down, and as they returned to Earth, the hatch opened, and it wasn't the richest man in the world who caught my attention as he stepped out of the hatch. No, there was an older lady who afterwards stood and put her arms in the air as she came out of the hatch along with the space crew. And I thought to myself, who is that? Who's that? That, That's that's incredible. There is a very late on in life person coming out of a space hatch. I'm like thinking to myself, wow, this is incredible. Who is this? Started to research the story. Her name is Wally Funk. She was, and she is, a space astronaut. In the 1960s, she had a dream in her life that she would become an astronaut in space. Over the course of time, she trained, she kept believing, she applied for numerous space programs, but she was rejected because she was a woman. She was rejected even though her exams reflected that she was far beyond most male astronauts. She could not go to space purely for the reason that she was a woman. Her wings had literally been clipped, but she waited and she waited and she kept pursuing. As I read this, I, I, was, I was nearly getting emotional. She kept pursuing. It said she did 19,000 flying hours. She helped over 3,000 pilots attain or achieve their dream. She was consistent. She kept going. She kept going. And at 82 years of age, she got the call to go to space. 
As I looked, I, I literally was emotional. I couldn't believe that after such a long journey of waiting, a dream came to fruition. Listen, friend, here is the thing. No matter how long you wait, the dream is never too late. The Holy Spirit just spoke to me so clearly that if you're under 82, God's not done with you. If you're 83, it's time that you can make history. She was not rusting away. She wasn't saying it's over. No, she was trusting that the dream would come to fruition. If Wally Funk can enter space at 82, what can God still do with you? Dreams that you may feel that were dead and buried are coming to life, I believe, over the course of this series. I believe that God is restoring, that wings that have been clipped will fly again, that no God-given dream is dead, that it's never too late for God to do what only He can do. I believe on a spiritual level that those who wait on the Lord, they will run and they will not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Hey, you may have been walking with the Lord for a number of years and you're feeling faint and weary. I believe today God is restoring hope and you are going to fly on wings like eagles. Wait on the Lord because if you can wait for it, you will walk into it. I want to pray for you today. Maybe you're here and you'd say, my wings were clipped. Things happened in my life that, that crushed my dreams, that crushed my opportunity. I, I feel a little bit like Wally. I wasn't allowed to do what I felt called to do. God can restore. God can turn things around. God has a plan and a purpose. Maybe you're here and you'd say, God, reignite the dream in me today. Help me to wait on you. Help me to wait on your timing, on your plan. Thank you, Lord, that you're waiting for me to be ready. I want to pray with you. If that's you, wherever you are, in your room, watching, come on, just raise your hand. I want to pray that God will give you the ability to continue to wait on him. Father God, I thank you for every person who has raised their hand, that has a dream that they are saying, Lord, I am trusting and waiting on you. I pray right now in Jesus' name, Father God, that you would seal the dreams in your people that have been resurrected over these past few weeks, that you would give them the trust and the faith to say, Lord, even when I don't see it, Lord, I know that you are working. Lord, I know you are birthing new things. Help me to wait on you. Because Lord, if we wait for it, we will walk in it. Come on, let's give all of those people a massive round of applause. God is restoring, he's renewing, and we can wait on him. We can wait on his purposes. We can wait on him. He is a good father who can strengthen us along the way. I wanna pray with one final group of people. Maybe you've just clicked on, maybe you've just logged on, somebody sent you the link. Maybe you've been watching for a number of weeks or a number of months. We want to give you an opportunity to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You know, today is a significant day. We're talking about dreams. This series over the last number of weeks, we've been talking about dreams. God has a dream for your life. And his number one dream is that you would know him, that you would have relationship with him, that you would know his son, Jesus, who died for you on the cross. He dreamt it so much that he took action 2,000 years ago and sent his son to have relationship with you. He gives us life to the full. He tells us, hey, you don't need to live and dream the way the world dreams. But no, you can live eternally with purpose and with life. If that's you today and you'd say, Daniel, I wanna give my life to Jesus. I wanna let go of all of the hurt and the pain of the past. And I wanna ask Jesus to be my Lord and savior. I would love to pray with you right now. Come on, let's pray this together. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, I repent from my sin and I ask you to be the Lord and savior of my life. From this day forward, I choose to follow you. Amen. Come on, wherever you are on the chat, at home, come on, let's give these people a massive round of applause. Welcome to the family of God. And hey, as a, a new person, we would love 
to bless you with a 21-day guide. It's 21 days of walking this journey with God. We'd love uh, to get this to you. You can just click on the button and uh, we'd love to get a good news guide to you. Church, I'm expecting for the next few weeks of this series, God has been doing incredible things despite everything that has been happening. Dreams are being restored. Dreams are being resurrected and God is moving. We love you. God bless you. Let's dream again.